going on everybody? ODC here and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review we're going to take a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series High Altitude Halo Jumper Trooper. Um, this is a figure I was actually um, heavily anticipating and um, when they announced this and the sniper I was definitely uh, pleasantly surprised with an actual Halo Jumper. Um, been kind of waiting, um, paratroopers and, um, halo jumpers are some of my favorites as far as any sort of trooper goes. So when they announced that they were actually just going to do kind of a generic trooper, um, this kind of fit, fit, uh, what I was looking for as far as from a military action figure line. And, um, especially coming from GI Joe, um, I mean, I guess you could, if you wanted to, you could almost name this guy Altitude if you wanted to. Um, it even says on the packaging, high altitude. So, I mean, it's almost like a, an homage to the Trooper Altitude. But um, obviously different paint deco and stuff like that. This isn't really Sky Patrol or anything like that. But um, taking a look at the figure here as I'm just kind of monologuing for a second... He comes with a, a bunch of stuff, like a, a ton of stuff. Some is a bunch of, you know, some are reused parts. The body itself is pretty much reused from um, Airborne. And then, obviously, Airborne's parts were uh, heavily reused from Scrap Iron. So, I mean, I don't mind reuse as long as it makes sense within the actual character and I think it does make sense here even I think the vest is pretty similar if not almost the same as as um airborne's might be some differences here and there with paint echo and stuff like that obviously but um it, a lot of it is heavy reuse here which like I said I, I guess I don't really mind that all that much because it is a troop builder at the end of the day but we do have some nice paint deco for the um bdus or fatigues whatever you want to call them it's a more of like a almost like a woodland uh fatigue which is pretty cool looking the face has also got a nice deco for some um face paint which looks really good and I guess uh, I'm assuming probably people will buy multiples of this and possibly use this for a custom hit and run or, you know, a plethora of different other characters that use face paint. Um, but you could go that route if you wanted to. I'm assuming we'll probably end up getting a hit and run down the road. So if you don't want to wait, maybe you could use this guy um, as a base for that. Or you could just pop the head off and use it on a different body if you really wanted to. But um but yeah, he comes with a bunch of stuff. I think he's this is a pretty good offering as far as especially a troop builder. Um, some stuff that is reused, and I'll show that first, and then I'll get to the stuff that is new. We've got the obligatory display stand, which I actually do like quite a bit. It's nice to see that um, at least these troop builders do come, or, or even some deluxe figures come with these display stands. I feel like every offering should come with a display stand but I, th I think they only stick to troop builders and retro carded figures that we get these so that's an unfortunate thing that we're not getting them with everybody but it would be nice if we at least even got this um, it even has a spot for a name on the plaque but there's no name here which is maybe another unfortunate thing but it is there it is offered so uh, the next reuse part is the rifles that he comes with. He comes with three different assault rifles. He comes with this almost like a, a sniper, kind of. like a, So there's that. And then he comes with an assault rifle with a grenade launcher attached. The magazines on all of them are removable. And um, he also comes with this other assault rifle with no stock. Um, I got to say that... Um, you know, as far as these three rifles go, we've seen them before. We've seen them with the Viper 3-pack. And then we've seen them also with the um, Steel Core. A.K.A. well, the old... Well, I'll just say the Steel Core. Uh, not to confuse anybody. Uh, so those are the first three uh, reused parts. 
the I already talked about the body and all that. Um, I think the head might be new. I'm not 100% sure on that. The knife is also removable and reused from Airborne. Um, so there's that if you want to know about that. Um, the next piece that is reused is, are the goggles from Airborne. And they're pretty much just like a green plastic. Same thing goes for the rifles. I kind of wish they would stop with this like color coding everything. It's like, I, I don't know why they're doing that. It's very toy etic. And, you know, for G.I. Joe, you, I feel like the budget is high up enough, especially if you're spending $35 on this figure, that these should just, I mean, if you're going to do all one color for a rifle, just make them all black then. It just makes things easier, and if people want to paint them, they can paint them after. But making them all green, just kind of, I don't know, they look like, they, it looks like a plastic accessory. I don't know. The next thing that he comes with that is reused is also the goggles from Airborne. And they are actually painted, which is nice for the lenses. So that's pretty cool. And then we've got the quad nods, which are also painted on for the lenses. And they are only painted on one side, which isn't the biggest deal in the world because you're probably not going to see them 99% of the time. So that's no big deal there. Um, now, when it comes to this helmet, I, I think this was reused. I, I'm not 100% sure on that. Maybe it was with Grunt. Maybe it was with Rock and Roll. I, I don't think it's the same exact helmet, uh, but it could possibly be the same one as Airborne. Um, so there's that, but we do have some different paint deco here. We've got some green plastic, and then we've got some like light tan painted for the um, side of the helmet and stuff like that, like padding and whatever that is. Um, and then we've got the um, communication uh, ear earbuds, whatever you want to call them, for that. Um, next up, what is new? Now we do have a new helmet here, which is really nice, I think. Um, at least the majority of it is, I want to say, new. And we do also have this kind of halo jumper-esque helmet, which is, I think, quite nice. I think they did a pretty good job with this. And it looks really good. And you can also move this down. It is just pegged into the sides. And you can also remove this from the helmet if you wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to do that just because I feel like it's a little unnecessary. But um, you can just fit, uh, fixate it right on his head. And then you can bring those down to cover the eyes. So there's the first piece that is new. Um, if you want to put the other helmet on him, you can. No problem. Just like so. Just kind of want to just pop it on there. And then there you go. You have a nice tactical helmet for him. Now, if you wanted to put the quad nods on, you could. They just peg right in to the helmet. Just like that. And it is a tight fit. And that's... Whoop. Sometimes they want to stay in and sometimes they don't. Just give it a little bit of pressure and you should be good. But they're just not wanting to do this because I'm on camera right now. They were, had no issue before. <laughs> I swear, every time I'm on camera, the no, plastics just don't want to agree with me. But there, you can have them up if you want to have them. Now, this isn't accurate, obviously. But you can have them upward, so they're out of the way. And then just flip them around and then peg them in. It is a very tight fit for some reason on this particular helmet, which I think is still the same one that was used for Airborne, which is weird. But you can have them down like so. The goggles will also fit. these. Now, these goggles are meant to go over the eyes, just like Airborne. So you want to have those goggles kind of go over the head like so if you want to have him set up like this. You're not going to be able to fit these goggles on when you have the Halo Jumper helmet on just because of the goggles being able to go down. Um, and I almost feel like it's kind of redundant to have two sets of goggle, goggles on him, you know. Um, but you can get them on the head. Everything is very, like, just it's fighting me today on this review. But there you go. I know they're crooked on his head, but it is what it is. I'm just trying to show that they can go on. Now, the other goggles that are covers um, can go on this helmet and sit nicely 
over the top. Just like Sly Stallone, you know, over the top. Hey, over the top. You know, hey, yo. But there you go. It can sit on there just like Airborne. No problem there. Um, the next cool thing that he does have, which is new, is an all-new sculpted backpack. And it's a parachute uh, pack. And uh, let me just take this off for now. We'll get to that in a second. But it is actually a really nice sculpt. It is all just a green plastic. Um, and it pretty much mirrors this color. Same color for the rifles. Um, and then you can just kind of, you got a peg right here. Um, pegging a strap. So you just peg that on there when you got it on him. And then there's also a peg for the back. So it goes directly into the back. And to get that on him, and we'll just gear him up. And let me just point out really quick, we also do have this for his altitude meter. So he knows how low he is or how high up he is in the sky or how close the ground is coming. So that's nice. And then we just get this on. You just want to line it up with the peg hole in the back. And just give it a little bit of force, a little bit of push. And then there you go. It sits right there. And then you just want to peg this on. Now... This was going to take you a, a, maybe a little bit of a minute. It's it's not too bad with mine. Maybe I got mine a little bit uh, more used to the <laughs> the peg, more used to the hole. But um, there it goes, and that's how it sits on him. So that's if you want to gear him up, that's what you can do. Next thing we have that is new, an all-new sculpt, is this breather mask. And it attaches to the backpack. There's the peg, and it's a nice deep peg, and there's a nice deep peg hole. So that works, and you just want to set it up, and you want to have it sideways. You don't want to have it up. I mean, I guess you could if you really wanted to, but it to fixate it onto the helmet, um, you kind of want to have this. I just find it easier to put it this way. Now, if you want to put it the other way, you can, whatever. Um, but to peg it on, what I would like to do, or what I like to do, excuse me, not would like to do, but like to do, is kind of put it on before and then put the helmet on the head. Now you can do it either way, whichever way you want to do it, whichever way works for you, whichever works best for you, personal preference. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, but I at least like to peg one in and I'm doing it the wrong way. So don't do what I just did. You want to peg it on the outside. Now I'll leave one on and then you get this on his head, right? And kind of leave it a little loosey-goosey. And this actually makes a lot of sense why they had them peg on the outside. Because it makes it so much easier to just peg in on the outside as opposed to the inside. So now he's got his mask on. You can bring that down. And now you've got an official halo jumper. So, like I said before, if you want to have it angled this way, you can. But it kind of just wants to drift over here anyway. And it, there's, it gives you more clearance to kind of have him holding a rifle or whatever. There is a lot of hindering. Um, I find that this rifle right here is the easiest to have him posed with just because you don't have a stock getting in the way, but you can have him hold whatever. This is just the easiest to have him hold. So there's that to point out, um, but he can hold it. He can two hand it, no problem. And he can, you know, dive out of a plane if you want to have him holding it I, I don't know any halo jumper that would have an assault rifle being held while they're jumping out of a high altitude plane like that but the world is your oyster you do what you want uh the other thing that he comes with is also this pistol which is also just a green plastic which is unfortunate as well um and it has a extended barrel for a hush puppy but there's no hush puppy for it now it does come with a silencer. So the reason why you can't attach the silencer to the pistol is because it's got a peg. And that has a peg too. So you can just use it on the rifles. There you go. And then there you go. And same thing here. It is a tighter fit on this smaller one, but it does work. So there you go as well. The other cool feature that he's got that most others don't have because of the new backpack is storage, which is really nice. You can lift this up. There's two pegs here. This peg secures the backpack. 
this peg is actually meant for the actual working parachute, which is pretty cool. So you want to take this piece and you want to peg it right to that middle one, right? And you're going to have to use some force. Um, it didn't really pop off on me actually at all, but you can also fit this and I tried to do it. I just don't want to wrinkle it any more than it's already wrinkled, but you can fold this up and fit this into the backpack and it will store in the backpack. Now it will take up all the room in the backpack. So you can't put any of the other accessories in, but if that's what you want to do, you can do it. Um, I'm going to shoot some footage outside probably the next day after I'm shooting this because I'm shooting this at like one in the morning right now, but <laughs> I'll shoot some footage with him parachuting from the sky. I'm going to toss him up in the air and see if it actually is a working parachute. All right. Um, here is, uh, sorry, let me turn the TV off before I get up. Oh, there goes Thundertron. Uh, sorry, you're way up here. <laughs> um, Okay, so we're gonna go test this out. Here he is. Hi, hello, sir. There's the inside of my house. All hell's about to break loose because I have to let the dogs out while I do this. And there's Dusty. Hi, Dusty. Say hi. Say, oh, no, he'll do that in about a minute. When I let them all out. So you guys will get to witness this little, here they come. Here's Dobby. Oh, oh, I'm already getting bumped into. You ready to go out? You ready? You guys ready to see this? Here it goes. Let's see if it'll even work. Oh, oh look at that. Okay, I'm take it. It's like they've never been outside before. Anyway, I got to do this outside because <laughs> um, there's no other way to do it. Um, all right, so I will set you guys up over here. Now, my backyard's kind of weird. Um, that's our old duck menagerie. We don't have any ducks anymore, unfortunately. Um, there's Dusty running around like a crazy. There's there's our puppy, Kurt Russell. <laughs> there's Dobby the Great Dane. And there's Aria. There you've been introduced. I don't even know if you got them in any of the shot. But all right, so my backyard's weird, like I said, and it's kind of like like sloping down. I don't know why I still have this in my hand. That's my, um, but here he is. There he is. He is a really cool figure. I really love the, the, um, the BDU design. I mean, it really is very well done. The overall sculpt of this guy is so good. And I'm, I'm doing an outside review apparently. Anyway, let's get the testing done because that's what we're here for really at the end of the day. So, Let's see if he actually can float down with his parachute. I'm gonna shoot him up. So like the old school way, like when we were kids, is you kind of want to grab, and I'm wondering if because this is cockeyed, the way you have to feed it, if it's going to even work. But the old school way of doing it was to kind of fold it like this from the back and then kind of just launch him straight up in the air from there and then just see what happens after that. So that's what we'll try and do for a couple of tries. And then uh, I'll just try and just shoot the figure up and see if the parachute will follow after. So here we go, let's see if it works or if he's just gonna plummet to his death. Um, maybe I should back up a little bit. Let's try and see. No, <laughs> it started to, but and he got a broken ankle. His ankles are. Oh, it's a poor ankle. Um, so first try, fail. We'll give him a couple try. We'll do three tries. Yeah, it worked a little bit better. So I would say the last two tries were a lot better. Um, I think the best bet is to just kind of toss the figure up. Um, it kind of works. Um, 
I think it's more for like a like a throwback aesthetic as opposed to an actual functional. Well, I mean, it's it's quasi functional, but it's you know there's a lot of weight on the figure and it's also holding a lot of weight. But I gotta say this, um, kudos on the actual design because this, the parachute is functional and the backpack stayed locked the entire time. So no issue with that at all. No issue with any like breakage other than his visor popped up. But who gives a shit about that? Um, yeah, I would say definitely a, a thumb up um, with the uh, the parachute, I was expecting a lot less, to be honest with you. Let me move you guys up. You guys are like way down there. Um, but yeah, kudos to Hasbro on uh, doing the best they could. I don't I don't know if they even tested this thing, but um, yeah, good job. The other feature that he has is you can fit all his stuff in there, which is really nice. So all the stuff that you don't necessarily want to have him stored with other than you know the rifles obviously those are not going to fit in there even the suppressor you can put in there and the helmet it'll all fit in there and i've gotten it to fit all the items which is fantastic i love storage it works it's great and you can still have the parachute attached to his backpack as well so that's even nicer. So you can have him fully geared up, fully ready for whatever his mission is and have him parachute in, you know, and boom, he's got all of his stuff in his backpack. He can just offload the backpack because he doesn't need it anymore because he's already hit ground. He can even switch helmets now to this more tactical helmet once he's on the ground, ditch that helmet, ditch the, the uh, breathing apparatus, and he's ready for combat. So there's that. That's really cool, too. Um, so you've got a lot of options with him, and I love that. Anyway, for articulation, the head cancelable side to side. It is on double ball peg. So we got a ball peg in the neck, ball peg at the head, or at the top of the neck joint for the head. But he can look up about that far. He can look down. He can tilt side to side. He can jiggle, you know, all that fun stuff. We got drive turkeys. Oh, yeah, we got some gobbles. <laughs> Um, arms can go up about that far so he can t-pose and they go a little bit further up than normal so that's nice good range of motion there and then we also have a swivel in the arm we have a swivel at the bicep we do have a double jointed elbow same thing as scrap iron and airborne swivel at the wrist we do have a lateral i think a lateral hinge yes we have a lateral hinge joint on this side and a vertical hinge joint on that side so there's that. We also have a butterfly joint, but it's kind of almost useless. And I would assume with a tack vest on that we would be able to get better range of motion uh, with a deeper cut. So it, with tack vests, I hope in the future they start doing deeper cuts because whatever's underneath is kind of irrelevant. Anyway, we do have a waist twist. It is hindered due to the harness, but that's okay because you can still twist twist and shout, you know, all that fun stuff. He can pivot side to side. He can crunch forward about that far. He can go back a little bit. Not the craziest, but it is due to a lot of this um, tack vest and then the harness itself. Legs can go forward. Legs can go back. Upper thigh swivel. Double jointed knees. And it is a very tight double jointed knee. So there you go with that. That's maxed out. And then next up, we've got a pointy toey. Uh, a little bit hindered due to just the pants right here. And then pointy heel. We do have a ankle pivot, two peg holes. And then we also have drop down legs. And he can also do the splits better than most Spider-Man figures. And a partridge in a pear tree. And there is that as far as that goes. So really cool stuff that I think he comes with. Um, some quick, quick size comparisons here. That we'll do we'll do obligatory duke because we always do obligatory duke here and there's duke he is kind of crouched a little bit let's get him upright and standing at attention soldier there we go boom 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 there is mr duke so scales well with duke obviously because he is from the same line let's bring in rex really quick there's captain rex let me get him standing right. 
Okay. There's, oh, no, knocking over Brody. Knocking over. Here is a Marvel Legend Vulcan. He's a little bit taller, beefier. And we'll do another fellow mate. We've got uh, this guy, Mr. Night Creeper. And expect his review soon, too. His feet kind of suck. I'm not going to lie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rant about that a little bit in the in the review because I don't like how curved his feet are. But there you go. You get, get an idea for it. Um, as far as another size comparison here, you know what? Why not? Let's get ridiculous with it. Here's Vector Prime. <laughs> There's a Transformer. And we'll do one more. We'll do a Mythic Legion. There you go with a Mythic. And let's get really silly with it. You ready? Here's Jab. There you go. Street Sharks. And he's going to fall. Fix the legs. There we go. So, that's just silly. <laughs> that's just a silly one right there. But anyway, um, that is essentially it for him. Now, he, you know, he poses like every other, you know, classified series figure. His knee is really frozen here. There we go. Okay. And I'm really not ham-fisting it. I know it probably looks that way, but I mean, I have to put enough force where he can, you know, actually bend the dang leg. But um, he poses like any other classified series figure. I just think the majority of people will know this at this, you know, by this stage of things. So, I mean, you can get him taking a knee, um, whatever you want to do. Um, maybe cleaning his knife. Let's get him holding his knife. There you go. You can have him do that. Get a get a sharpening a sharpening uh, <laughs> stone, and he can be sharpening his his knife here. Whatever you want to do, the world is your oyster. Go for it. But I think it's a solid release, and um, I don't know if I had to give him a rating. Um, I would definitely recommend picking them up. Um, the $35, I don't think is too egregious. Um, we, we do get some new stuff with him, which is nice. Um, I like the parachute. I like the backpack with storage. I like the new helmet with the, uh, breather mask. Um, and then, you know, you do get some options with the rifles. I would prefer black plastic for the rifles and then, you know, whatever. But it's just, it's fine. The extra helmet is a nice touch. The suppressor is nice as an option. So you got some options here. I do like it. So I'll go ahead and I will be honest here and I'll give him a two thumbs up. I think it's a solid army builder. I could definitely foresee him dropping in price. I think the other two, like the infantry trooper and the diver also dropped in price. So it just seems like some of these army builders aren't probably selling as well as people think. Um, I really think at this point that this might be my favorite so far. I don't have the sniper yet, but we'll get to her once I get, once I get her. Um, I would rank him first and then the diver second and then the infantryman third as far as how it rank the the troopers um and he can also go on his display stand which i showed him on in the beginning of the review but if you want to have him on there you can there you go there's him on the display stand and that is essentially it for him i mean he's pretty straightforward it's nothing that we haven't seen before um, some new stuff, uh, better paint echo. I think that's why I'm definitely leaning towards the two thumbs up here and a full recommendation. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this review of the G.I. Joe Classifieds High Altitude Halo Diver. Um, I would just also like to thank uh, Terry Turner and Woodman29 for being my channel members so far. And uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for me. And I hope you guys have a great day. 
and I will see you guys on the flip side.